What is going on, guys? It is your boy TKD. Want you to hear back and not TKD. TKD. Want you to hear back again with another video. And over the break, we did have an interesting thing come up about this strange back button attachment for the DualShock 4. And so this got a lot of people, you know, talking and stuff like that. And I believe I have a very, very important theory that uh, directly, you know, that that like this attachment directly links onto the upcoming DualShock 5, the controller for the PlayStation 5. So without further ado, let's go over what I think is going down with the DualShock 5 and that the DualShock 4 with the back button attachment and, and the DualShock 5 will be very similar, even including the button. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. And so this whole thing started way back on December 17th of last year, 2019, when they unveiled that they will be releasing via the PS blog, well not via, via the PS blog, but they announced it on the PS blog uh, that they will be releasing the DualShock 4 back button attachment. And so what it is, you'll see pictures on screen here, and maybe it may be also the trailer if I re remember to put it there, likely I will. But nonetheless, the DualShock 4 back button, back button attachment, uh, it's gonna be an attachment that goes uh, that like plugs in on the base of the controller so i believe it'll be utilizing this mystery port that we still don't have a reason for and sony loves to put these random ports uh there was one on the psp as well as the ps vita and now the dualshock 4 where there really isn't any use for them that we had and for the ps vita we never got a use for that I, I, and i think the psp they released a camera in japan that you could attach to that top port as well as now the DualShock 4 we haven't had any use for it until now and so uh, it looks like it'll be able to plug straight into that as well as it has a headphone jack pass through as well if you use that a lot fret not you can still get access to that even though it is covered uh, via the back button attachment there is a whole extended pass through thing to let you, you, you to let you use the headphone jack uh, even though you have the back button attachment and so it is supposed to also have the OLED screen on the back that will show I believe uh, uh, via like you know left or right which uh button that the left or right button is programmed to on the back button attachment and you can i believe do any button you want on the dualshock 4 like you can have it to be i don't know the left uh the share button the right start button etc whatever uh but typically i feel like people are mostly going to do either r1 or l1 or r2 and l2 or maybe uh the most common i feel like is definitely going to be reload for most games which is square and crack for most games which is going to be the circle button and so um it you know the only weird thing that i see about the oled screen is that it is facing behind the controller so you can't look at it you know when you're actually using the controller straight up you can't really see the oled screen unless you turn it around and you'll be able to see it over here on the back side so kind of weird uh design on that front front i feel like it would have been interesting if they just had it on the front and like a little like half circle oled screen but nonetheless you know it is what it is and we will get to see uh when i finally get my hands on that because i do have one pre-ordered and i will do a separate video about all of that where i will you know play it for a few games play it for a few weeks maybe and uh, tell you all how i feel about it once i get uh my my hands on the back button attachment and it looks like uh it is coming out on january 23rd so next week uh it should be shipping out or it'll be at my house on the 23rd we will we will have to see uh whenever that comes around but they do make an emphasis on that it has been tested by playstation and they have the ergonomics of the of the dualshock 4 controller in mind um and different stuff like that as well as they tried out different games as well as vr titles and they say that it works very very well and they tested it in-house so it should be cool and it should you know lack that kind of uh you know third party you know aftermarket type of uh, uh, accessory feel that some accessories have uh in terms of like the third party aftermarket stuff so it should not have that feel and it should be really really cool um overall and it's only gonna be thirty dollars in the u.s and 39 and 39 39.99 there we go for canadian dollars uh but around the world you can do your conversions and see uh what's up with that i'm not even sure if this is a world right of a you know if, if this is a world world worldwide release i think it might be only for us and canada but we'll have to see when the full thing uh comes out but but let's go into some other stuff about the controller that i think ties a lot to ps5 
Now, what's also interesting here is that while we, of course, got the news about the DualShock 4 bad button attachment, all that good stuff, where now, you know, DualShock 4 users can have a more, I feel like, overall, a uh, very straightforward way to be able to get the pro controller market type of features onto a more uh you know baseline uh dualshock 4 for a very very low price and stuff like that so i think overall that's a benefit that we will talk about later on in the video as well but what was also interesting was that the day after christmas on the, on december 26 the homie tide ducks as you all know or if you don't know he's a insider uh leaker type person on twitter that definitely has a lot of really good credible uh insights on the a lot of different things in the gaming industry so he um you know just posted a picture of an updated version of the playstation dualshock controller uh patent update that is readily available but he's the one that kind of brought it to my eyes and that is that it looks like they've updated the dualshock 5 patent or the presumed dualshock 5 patent uh to have back buttons in a similar placement as the PS4 DualShock 4 back button attachment that we just talked about that is releasing next week. Um, and so when that got brought up and, you know, coupled with that, you put two and two together and you kind of have an assumption that maybe these are a lot more connected than we all think. Because overall, even when they talked about the DualShock 5 and even when they laid out some features about the uh, DualShock 5 that will be coming to the controller, like having, you know, haptic feedback and triggers and stuff like that and, and just overall those little tweaks and stuff like that the the overall scheme of the dualshock 5 kind of doesn't seem that different than the dualshock 4 and plus on top of that we you know do have of course things like usb type c but overall the like layout of the dualshock 5 seems to be uh sounding like it might be just the dualshock 4 design just a little bit more updated similar to how we got the dualshock 2 and dualshock 3 with the ps3 and how the dualshock during the ps3 era was very much similar to the ps2 controller just wireless essentially you know and it had pretty much the same layout overall and the same feel in the hand as well but it even goes deeper than that because there have been some leaks and some sources from people at development studios that actually have running dual i mean have running ps5 uh dev kits and that have been working on games for ps5 that they have said that the dualshock 4s that we've had for years now are completely compatible with at least the dev kits we will know if they'll be compatible with the full launch but i have to see that you know if they are letting these developers use dualshock 4s to be able to test ps5 games on a ps5 dev kit you gotta think that it's probably more than likely that the dualshock 4 will be compatible with the ps5 out of the box that's not confirmed but i feel like that's a pretty you know safe assumption to make there that there is a possibility that they'll allow the dualshock 4 just out of the box to be compatible with the ps5 however maybe it's not fully functioning and fully compatible with the PS5 until you get the back button attachment for $30 uh, that makes your controller uh, that you have already, you know, be completely compatible with the PS5 as opposed to having to go out and buy a DualShock 5 for your PS, you know, for like another controller for your PS5. If you want two controllers, you know, you could in theory, if you have a DualShock 4 laying around, you could just pick up the back button attachment and be able to play it on the PS5. I think that might be what they're going for in terms of the overall compatibility because it is a weird time to release something like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though, to me, it is a welcoming um, addition to the PS4 era of, like, the DualShock 4s and, like, attachments and, like, a different, uh, you know, peripherals and attachments and stuff. Like, it definitely is welcoming. Like, I don't hate it. But it is an odd time to drop this, you know, so close to the next gen. And I think that might be why they are launching it now. And it's that they realize that, yeah, they would like, um, you know, the DualShock 4 to be, you know, cross-compatible and work with the PS5. Because the DualShock 4 does not work well with the PS5. PS3. You can get it to work, but it has to be plugged in, I believe, and the whole button is all messed up. Like, the DualShock 4 doesn't really work that well with the PS3, uh, and vice versa. Like, I don't know why you would want to use a PS3 controller on the PS4. Don't know why, but maybe because the, the you know, DualShock 4 um, has those things like the touchpad and the light bar, and hopefully with the DualShock 5 controller, they allow us to turn off the light bar if a game doesn't require it. I would like that, but who knows? Or, or, or maybe dim it even more, just to say battery life but nonetheless 
Um, I think that's what they're aiming for. I think that's why we are getting, you know, we are seemingly getting this back button attachment out of the blue, seemingly. Maybe it's not so much out of the blue. Like, maybe it's for those that would want to use their DualShock 4. Uh, with the PS5 and with the back button attachment, you can use those uh, rear buttons if you want to. And also, like I said before, I do feel like the back button, you know, the back button attachment is a good kind of answer to the scuff gamings of the world and those custom controllers that have all those back paddles and stuff like that. And you can even change the D-pad on some of them and you can uh, tweak the mob travel, the um, R2 and L2 and uh, L2 and R1 uh, need to travel to be able Able to have it uh, register as a button press. I know there's some controllers that you can tweak the amount of travel that it does to make it shorter so you can do a little like rapid fire type deal on those triggers and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's a neat answer to those where you can get you know at least two extra buttons for 30 bucks and you use the controller that you have right now all i gotta do is just plug it in you know like i feel like that is an overall good deal and a very very straightforward way of answering uh that for someone that wants more functionality with the controller but don't want to spend alarm in like an arm and leg or send in their DualShock 4 to be able to be modified to those specifications. So I do like the overall prospect of this and the price point as well. But what was also interesting to see is the amount of people that are reacting to the uh, DualShock 4 back button attachment online from reviewers that have it already. So while my back button attachment is still in the mail and it's still coming in, I think next week maybe we'll see, I don't know. Uh, there have been of course the major publications that have gotten their hands on it and I did want to read some of the people's reactions towards it and so i'm gonna go ahead and just read ign's quote here and we'll uh, talk about it all when i'm done here so uh ign says whether the back button attachment is a sign of a ps5 feature to come or just a neat additional offering from sony i'm very glad to have it its arrival may be as odd as first trying to plug in the attachment but after a few days playing with it it already feels like an integral part of my playstation playtime and if it's here to stay i'd welcome a world where it's built into the controller and so next up here i'll read one from polygon and again there were other um you know editors from venture b and mashable but i will link that of course down below in the description so make sure you go check out that as well as our other links like the video if you enjoyed it all the good stuff down below in the description and comment section as well and next up here here's what polygon had to say about the back button attachment they say here that quote this attachment won't sink all the companies selling high-end pro control controllers, those products still offer way more flexibility and customization options than simply adding two rear back paddles. But for folks looking to dive into the world of back panel buttons without having to spend more than $100 on an entirely new controller, the DualShock 4 back button attachment does its job admirably well and at a fraction of the cost and so overall like it seems like a lot of people are you know getting their hands on this uh from big publications and it seems like they are enjoying the way it feels in the hand they are enjoying the way the added functionality for the cost benefit as well as how it feels overall in the controller with uh even the ign one saying that it feels very very you know integral to the playstation uh overall ecosystem and it feels like it belongs on the dualshock 4 and so i think those are pretty interesting but I think there is a lot more to this and we will see, you know, I'm I'm willing to bet and say here, you know, on this video that I really do feel that the DualShock 5 will have the similar back buttons on the final build of the controller built in already. I feel like this is a stepping stone to get us used to the back buttons and where it be placed on the on the DualShock 4 and I really feel that aside from the triggers and the USB type C and the haptic feedback extra stuff that they added to the DualShock 5 I feel like the DualShock 4 with the back button attachment is the DualShock 5, you know, aside from those things that they cannot add and uh, add like an attachment to or, or like a different port or just way more hardware inside. I feel like if you take a DualShock 4 and put the back button attachment, that is a DualShock 5. And so let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you guys going to get the back button attachment? Are you interested in it? Are you thinking about it? Let me know how you feel about it. Do you want it? Do you hate it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And make sure also while you are down there to check out our description where you can find our different links to this story as well as our Twitter, our Discord, our anchor link to listen for our, to listen for our long form content. Those being our podcast, Road to Part 2, Road to Dreams, as well as the new Save Slot 
podcast that just got uploaded yesterday. Make sure to go check out that podcast if you're not. Very, very fun episode. And we'll be back every week talking to you about games down below in that description. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a like on the video as well as stay subscribed to PlayStation Source to keep up with the latest and greatest in PlayStation. Thank you for watching. And as always, greatness awaits.